What? What the hell is happening, Holmes? Calm yourself. While 2021's Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 had the world's most iconic detective confronting the ghosts from his past, Sherlock Holmes The Awakened has him dusting off his deerstalker cap in order to investigate a cult worshipping a cosmic Cthulhu-like presence. However, despite the clear influence of H.P. Lovecraft, The Awakened presents a mystery that's surprisingly light on scares, with the majority of its attempts to unsettle coming across as more silly than genuinely spine-chilling. Although there was still a solid amount of investigations and crime scene recreations to sink my teeth into over the course of its 10 hours, it was hard to fully buy into Sherlock's supposed battles with his own sanity at the center of the story when I struggled to find anything to fear in his surroundings. This place gives me the chills. What are we dealing with? Something that's finally interesting. A remake of the 2007 adventure of the same name Sherlock Holmes The Awakened has been rebuilt using the same game engine that powered Chapter 1, and its plot has been retooled slightly in order to make it fit in as a direct sequel to that 2021 origin story. The friendship between Holmes and Dr. John Watson is presented as being in its infancy, with Watson regularly pressing Holmes for information about what went down on the island of Cordona in Chapter 1, in an effort to peel back the layers and find out exactly what makes the detail-obsessed detective tick. Cordona does sound rather magical. Do you think you shall ever return? I, I don't know. While the writing and performances are of a reasonable standard, the dialogue scenes between the two crime-busting BFFs would probably have been a lot more engrossing, were I not so regularly distracted by the extremely loose lip-syncing, which makes it seem like each character is delivering their lines directly into the hot end of a hairdryer. He's smart in some ways, but he can't talk. Not a word. Unlike Chapter 1, which populates its open-world island setting with a variety of cases and side stories to uncover, The Awakened is a far more linear affair that sends Holmes and Watson globetrotting from the streets of London to an asylum in the Swiss Alps, then to the swampland of New Orleans, and then back to London again. The bulk of these settings present a substantial space to explore, but there's almost no incentive to do so since I found little of consequence to uncover off the main story path. A fisherman's hut. Not what we're looking for. In fact, it wasn't until I'd reached the final hours of the journey that I finally managed to stumble into a side case in London involving a dead spy. But it was jarringly snuffed out by Mycroft Holmes before it could develop into anything of substance. So the only real mystery surrounding it was trying to figure out why it was included at all. Do not investigate further. Do not talk about this matter to anyone and do not ask questions. Thank you. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes. For the most part, Sherlock's crime scene investigations are conducted in much the same manner as they are in Chapter 1. Presented with the often grisly aftermath of some wrongdoing, you must first pixel hunt your way around the scene to gather evidence like bloodstains and footprints, interview potential witnesses or known acquaintances of the victim. Do you happen to know Kimahir's shoe site? I wouldn't have the foggiest and then determine the sequence of events by shuffling through possible scenarios and the order in which they took place via a visual representation of Sherlock's imagination. Remarkable. It makes total sense. While it can still be rewarding to piece it all together, there's no question that the cases in The Awakened are far more straightforward than they were in Chapter 1. Whereas the previous adventure had Sherlock investigating evidence of vampires in a graveyard or determining the whereabouts of an escaped elephant, the Awakened sticks mostly to more generic kidnappings and murder and is all the more forgettable for it. Not only are the crimes less imaginative, but there's also very little risk of failure in solving them this time around. Whereas in Chapter 1 it's possible to accidentally send innocent people to jail if you aren't methodical enough in your casework, in The Awakened there's only ever one possible perpetrator to accuse. Mr. Soulsby, you know more than you're letting on. That means it can be tempting to just brute force your way through to the right conclusion, seeing as the only potential penalty for making mistakes along the way is fewer rewards unlocked in the bonus character art menu. This isn't the only area that the system has been streamlined either. Chapter 1's disguise system is ignored for the most part, and its archive research is now confined to paging through the pause menu rather than actually visiting a local newspaper office. It all results in casework that feels somewhat superficial compared to that of the previous game, and in spite of its multiple locations, it's considerably smaller in scope too. On the plus side, the ill-conceived combat sections of Chapter 1 were apparently tossed overboard on the ship ride home from Cordona, keeping the emphasis on the brain power of Sherlock rather than the firepower of his flintlock. And that seems more appropriate for the character. 
The tooth of an adult male likely lost in a beating. Only a couple of days old. Wait, what's happening? Instead of breaking up the casework with combat, The Awakened occasionally drags Sherlock into a craggy, Lovecraftian other world and forces you to complete a series of environmental puzzles in order to return him to reality. However, the solutions to these puzzles are either painfully obvious, typically following audible drones to locate floor panel switches and the like, or unintentionally hilarious at times requiring you to repeatedly throw Sherlock off ledges or into spiky traps, like he's Bill Murray desperately trying to escape the cycle of Groundhog Day. As a result, these dreamlike diversions are about as psychologically scarring as a stubbed toe, and don't do a particularly good job of conveying Sherlock's apparently fraying mental state. Occasionally, hallucinations and other encounters intended to disturb will bleed into the real world too. But these are arguably even more goofy. Retrieving a doll for a patient in the archaic Edelweiss Mental Hospital culminates in an act of ventriloquism that's more hokey than horrific. Tell him! But you said, and now I say tell him! Uh... While the mutterings of an animated corpse in a crypt beneath the port of London sound like the gargling of a caveman discovering mouthwash for the first time. John? It is worth pointing out the somewhat extreme circumstances surrounding the creation of The Awakened. Developer Frogwares is based in Ukraine, and a disclaimer that greets you ahead of the title screen states that development of this remake commenced only a couple of months after Russia began its invasion of the country in early 2022. Game development is an incredibly challenging business at the best of times, and I can't imagine the levels of stress that the threat of war would inflict on all personnel involved. Unfortunately, that adversity is evident in The Awakened, which suffers numerous cut corners, from the abrupt transitions between several late-game sequences to the recycling of character models and other assets throughout the adventure. I wasn't alive in 1882, so I can't be certain that newsstands in London weren't identical to those in New Orleans, but I doubt it. My head. What just happened? While Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 may have its own fair share of flaws, it was still reasonably competent as a detective simulation. In comparison, this remade version of The Awakened feels far more like an inferior throwback to old-fashioned point-and-click adventures, where trial and error was just as effective an approach as logic and reason, making its forensic deductions feel more like foregone conclusions. Now, spare yourself the trouble and tell me all you know. Okay, okay. This wouldn't be so bad if its Lovecraft-inspired mystery was compelling enough to sustain interest in its run-of-the-mill casework, but unfortunately it fumbles that too, with its ham-fisted attempts at horror more likely to tickle ribs than raise hairs. Sherlock Holmes' The Awakened could have been an intriguing clash of Cluedo with Cthulhu, but instead it's just a case of squandered potential. For more IGN reviews, check out our verdicts on Mighty Doom and Crime Boss Rock A City, and for everything else, stick with IGN. Please! No more! Stop it! Watson! John! Somebody!